since starting this channel, I've worked on videos about various historic subjects, including the 9-11 attack, the Oklahoma City bombing, presidential assassinations, and of course, NASA and Project Apollo, the space program that successfully sent the first human beings to the moon. What I didn't expect from the comment section was a massive amount of conspiracy theorists who believe 9-11 was an inside job, Oswald was completely innocent, and of course, the moon landing never actually happened. People love a good conspiracy theory, but I had no idea just how deep it went. So I entered into a conspiracy theory filled rabbit hole on YouTube and discovered just how many of these people exist, including actual flat earthers who seem to genuinely believe the earth is flat like a pancake. I'm going to do a little demonstration of how we can indeed measure water being horizontally level in the real world. And this just proves our practical reality is based on a level surface. Are you stupid or something? I didn't know these people really existed, and I refuse to even entertain anyone who thinks the Earth is flat. You have to be lying, mentally ill, or just a complete idiot. I will, however, be glad to respond to a few moon landing conspiracy theories in today's video. Every single piece of evidence that these theorists come up with can easily be explained and completely debunked. And today I'll go through five of the most common ones that I've seen from people saying that the moon landing had to be faked. None of them hold up at all. And when you really study the moon landing in depth, as I have for many, many years, it becomes clear that it would have taken a lot more work to fake the whole thing as opposed to actually just going to the moon. So today I'll be talking about five ridiculous theories in order from the least ridiculous to the most ridiculous. Number five, how did astronauts survive the Van Allen radiation belt? At least this one is an interesting question. Moon landing conspiracy theorists absolutely love the fact that the Van Allen radiation belt exists. It is a donut-like zone of charged particles that surround the Earth, and there is a high amount of radiation that could certainly be lethal if a human was exposed to it for too long. And that's the key thing. Don't stay in there too long and you might be okay, especially if you're in a spacesuit and spacecraft built by engineers who were perfectly aware of the Van Allen radiation belts. They did plenty of research, testing, and planning and understood exactly how to attack the potential problem. When planning to go to the moon, the NASA scientists and engineers and technicians have to plan everything out. They have to know exactly where the Earth is and where the moon is at all times, not only now but in the future because everything is constantly moving. And they also planned precisely when and where the astronauts would pass through the Van Allen radiation belt. And they planned it so that they would enter it at a trajectory and location that would minimize exposure to the radiation. They understood the energy distribution of the belts and where they could bypass the most dangerous parts and how to get through them as quickly as possible. Using the unit RIM, the crews were studied after each mission to see how much radiation they withstood and if they were ever in any danger. The Apollo 11 crew received 0.18 RIM on average. They would have had to receive around 300 in a short amount of time to be at risk of death. The radiation damage they received was not even strong enough to cause mild radiation sickness. While there were still risks during these missions of solar storms that could have indeed harmed the astronauts, the Van Allen radiation belts were just one of millions of obstacles and challenges that, that experts had to take on in order to accomplish the feat of going to the moon. The reality is the astronauts had plenty of protection, spent a minimum amount of time in the belts, and were never in any danger of being harmed, much less killed from the radiation. Number four, where are all the stars in the photos? Where are the stars? Conspiracy theorists say that this alone proves it was all filmed in a studio. Yeah, so the entire thing was faked, and the conspirators were smart enough and thorough enough to actually fire a real rocket up into space that people watched take off. They recorded fake communication throughout the entire mission with excellent actors because everything sounds so genuine. There were fake problems and fake solutions along the way, fake photographs of the Earth that look better than any modern day CGI. And they recorded all this fake footage to make it look like they were on the moon and it was all good enough to convince the entire world, even the Soviet Union, that it was all real. But 
they forgot to add the stars to the fake sky. You blew it! Or maybe there's a more logical explanation. The cameras the astronauts were using were traditional film cameras, which have different shutter speeds and apertures that change how much light is captured when a photo is taken. The faster the shutter speed and the smaller the aperture, the less light is captured. And these settings can be changed on expensive cameras and are set in order to get the best photograph of the main subject. For instance, in this photo, the main subject is the astronaut. A fast shutter speed will make the main subject sharper and make for a better photo. And because the astronauts were trying to take photos wearing these heavy suits and gloves, it was decided that the cameras would be set to a very fast shutter speed in order to make sure that most of the photos they took would be in focus and sharp. But the fast shutter speed would prevent other dim objects from being picked up. The stars are just faintly lit background objects. They were simply too dim for the camera to capture. It's really that simple. If they wanted to capture the stars, then the main object in the photo, whether the astronaut, the flag, or even the Earth, would have been overexposed and the photo would have looked bad. Number three, the US flag is waving in the wind, but there's no wind on the moon. Oops, it looks like the conspirators really blew it and forgot that there's no wind on the moon. But do moon landing conspiracy theorists really think that NASA and everyone else involved in going to the moon would want the flag to just droop there pathetically? Obviously, while planning the trip to the moon, they already knew that they wanted to put a US flag on the surface, and they already knew that the moon had no wind and no atmosphere. So unless something was done about it, the flag would just droop down miserably towards the moon's surface due to the gravity, and it would look that way forever. 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 Obviously, this wouldn't be ideal, so engineers got to work and figured out a way to make the flag spread out so it could be seen proudly. And that wasn't the only issue. They also had to figure out where to put it so it wouldn't get damaged during the mission. And it had to be accessible to the astronauts, so they encased it in a heat-resistant tube and attached it to the lunar module ladder. Then to make it stand out, they created a flagpole with a horizontal rod that was sewn into a seam on the top of the flag, that caused it to extend outward, preventing it from drooping down. Notice the top of the flag is almost perfectly straight. That's where the rod is. What appears to be waves or ripples in the flag is because the Apollo 11 astronauts had trouble getting the rod all the way out, so it caused some wrinkles, which actually ended up looking good. And there was also plenty of natural wrinkles just from the flag being stored during the trip. Future Apollo astronauts did the same thing and did not extend the rod all the way out so that it would have this natural ripple effect to it. Number two, we didn't have the technology to go to the moon in the 1960s. Says who? Obviously we did because we went. But what we didn't have in the 1960s was the technology to use CGI and special effects to create incredibly realistic images of Earth taken from the moon, incredibly breathtaking, realistic close-up photographs of the lunar surface. Yet conspiracy theorists think that all of these thousands and thousands of photos taken over multiple successful missions to the moon are all completely fake. It's much more realistic that they're actually real and that we actually did have the technology to get to the moon in the 1960s. Engineers, scientists, and even regular space and technology enthusiasts around the world knew about all the technological advancements that occurred throughout the 50s and especially 60s towards the goal of walking on the moon. Yes, the computing power at the time was nothing like it is today because the focus of all these smart people was to find a way to land on the moon, not to watch TikTok videos. All the ingredients to send humans to the moon and bring them back existed, and a few of these ingredients included a powerful rocket that could escape the Earth's gravity, a spacecraft with life support systems that could keep the astronauts alive, a flying vehicle that could land on the moon, spacesuits that keep the astronauts alive and somewhat comfortable, a way to communicate between mission control and the astronauts, a way to track and guide the spacecraft, and of course a way to get the astronauts back home safely. All of this existed. Some of the smartest people in the world worked tirelessly on all of these objectives for decades. Even when they had a plan to do it all, we didn't just jump in a rocket and head to the moon. Thousands and thousands of tests and missions were performed. Three astronauts even died during one of these tests in which things went horribly wrong. Improvements were made every step of the way. 
billions and billions were spent on the Apollo missions, even those that had no intention of walking on the moon. They were just steps in the right direction, testing one function or another. Apollo 8 went all the way to the moon and back, but never even took the lunar module along because it wasn't part of the mission. If they wanted to fake the whole thing, why not do it at that point, or at least for Apollo 9? But no, Apollo 9 was just a full test on the lunar module. Then there was Apollo 10. Billions and billions more were spent just to do a full dress rehearsal and a few more tests. With each mission, an entire Saturn V rocket, along with hundreds of millions of dollars in equipment and fuel, would be used up or discarded forever. Even missions where we didn't even walk on the moon, because each mission was necessary to build up knowledge, ability, and understanding towards the actual mission where an astronaut, in this case Neil Armstrong, would finally step foot on the moon. So this argument is just wrong. Of course we had the technology. Every single piece of technology used in the mission existed in 1969 and it's all laid out in the Saturn V flight manual along with other manuals and documents from that period. We had the technology because we decided to go to the moon and that's where the genius engineers and scientists focused their attention. If John F. Kennedy had said, we choose to have cell phones and we will have cell phones by the end of this decade, we probably would have all had cell phones by 1969. But that wasn't the goal. The goal was to get to the moon and we went. Number one, why haven't we gone back? I have to say this is the single dumbest thing conspiracy theorists say in regard to the moon landing being possibly faked. And I said the one that always gets me every time is the moon landing. How come we haven't gone back? Just that to be clear, like, people did land on the moon. I don't know. Okay, there we go. I don't know. I, I do know. I just want to know why we didn't go back. Why didn't we go back? As if going to the moon is like taking a drive to Omaha. When we first walked on the moon in 1969, it was one of the most historic and amazing feats in human history. Maybe the most historic, maybe the most amazing. Just landing and walking on the moon was the principal goal of the Apollo program and the Apollo 11 mission, and we actually did it. And then we kept using that technology to land on the moon five more times. And during those missions, we did plenty of geographical surveying, brought back lunar samples, conducted surface experiments, and took tons of photographs. It was ridiculously expensive. The federal government spent over $25 billion, which equates to over $320 billion today. Project Apollo was simply becoming too costly, national support was falling off, and the project was canceled after Apollo 17 in 1972. So after that, why would we be in a rush to go right back? The country had spent an insane amount of money to make it to the moon, and we did it during a time when war was going on. Troops were in Vietnam. There was much unrest in the United States. But after a period of time, space missions continued with Skylab and then the space shuttle in 1981. We created the International Space Station, but tragedies occurred like the Challenger and Columbia disasters, which did not help public support for space programs. Meanwhile, other wars and conflicts were happening. Going back to the moon just wasn't a huge priority. And as technology improved, any ideas of returning to the moon would require an entirely new program utilizing new technology and, of course, an insane amount of money. And a purpose. What would the purpose be? We'd already been there. We walked on it. We got samples. We did testing. The purpose would have to justify the enormous cost. So that purpose would probably have to be creating a permanent settlement with a lunar base and maybe some lunar satellites. And this means even more planning and more technology and more money. It would have made no sense for us to have returned to the moon too quickly. And it's not like hundreds and hundreds of years have passed. It's been about 50 years. America has had some other things on its plate. But now that over 50 years have passed, we are preparing for another mission to the moon with the Artemis program. But to say that us not having gone back to the moon like we were gonna just go right away, like just willy-nilly, let's go to the moon as some kind of evidence for a conspiracy theory makes absolutely no sense and shows no understanding for the massive cost, technology, and effort that goes into a mission to the moon. And every time I hear someone say it, especially someone I thought was pretty smart and well-respected, is an enormous disappointment. 
common sense should tell you it is not that easy to get to the moon it is certainly not cheap and it would have actually been shocking if we made it back in the 70s 80s or 90s i mean come on but that's gonna do it for today's video we went to the moon ladies and gentlemen i hope i've convinced just one person at least that we went to the moon humans walked on the moon it would have been much more difficult and actually impossible to have faked the whole thing in the late 60s as opposed to actually just going and it's a huge insult to all of the astronauts and all of the people who worked at nasa all of the family of the astronauts the astronauts who lost their lives it's a huge insult to all of them and really implies that many if not all of them are lying they're all lying and part of this conspiracy i mean let's just be real can we do that one time we definitely went to the moon i hope you guys have a great day hit that thumbs up and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video i'll be putting more out on space exploration and lots of other topics talking about different stuff that happened have a great day we'll talk to you next time